to elevate your assignments from a pass to a merit, you'd need to meet all the pass criteria, but then go into greater depth and in some cases provide additional detail. Pass criteria one asks you to explain the purposes and functions of HRM, but to meet the merit criteria you need to provide an assessment. Assess how the functions of HRM can provide talent and skills appropriate to fulfil business objectives. And just to remind ourselves, an assessment requires you to make reasoned judgments about what you are describing. So why do you think the HRM function you are describing is effective at providing the right talent and skills? And does it have any limitations? Notice here that you're being asked specifically about the provision of talent and skills. So writing about, for example, working conditions or employment legislation uh, would not be relevant here. And you need to answer this question in the context of fulfilling business objectives. Merit criteria two is identical to pass criteria two, except that the command word explain is replaced with evaluate. So don't just describe the strengths and weaknesses of different approaches. Uh, think about which are the most significant in different situations and explain why. Merit criteria three covers the different methods of human resource management and it requires you to explain the different methods used in HRM practices, providing specific examples to support evaluation within an organisational context. So do some research into different methods and give another evaluation here rather than just an explanation. And then give the assessor some specific examples that you've found which support and justify that evaluation. Merit criteria four again requires an evaluation. Evaluate the key aspects of employment relations management and employment legislation that affect HRM decision making in an organisational context. So what do you think are the key aspects of employment relations management and employment legislation? And importantly, why do you think the aspects you have chosen are key or more important than others that you are not describing? Remember that HR management is something that should serve both the employer and the employee. So don't forget to consider both perspectives. And finally, merit criteria five. And the key difference here between the pass and the merit is that the merit criteria requires you to provide a rationale. So give some specific examples of HRM practices in use in the workplace and then explain why you think those practices have been employed in those specific situations. So what benefit will they bring? What is the organisation intending to achieve by using them? So in summary, in order to achieve a merit, you will need to, first of all, meet all the pass criteria, then go into greater depth, provide analysis rather than just explaining or describing the ideas you're presenting, make reasoned judgments, for example, about what, uh, what you consider to be the most important aspects of employee relations management for merit criteria four and read about and identify uh, specific examples of good HRM practice which you can uh, use to support the evaluations you make and the opinions that you express. I hope you found this merit guidance useful. I recommend now that you listen to the distinction criteria lecture for this unit.